So welcome and thank you for joining my talk today. Um, I want to give you an overview um, on a proof of concept we have worked on. Um, and with that, I want to underline the importance of Cloud Foundry in such future scenarios. Um, and I have a lot of hardware here with me today. So finger crossed that everything will work out as planned. But before we get started, let me introduce myself first. So I'm Thorsten Born. Um, I'm part of the SAP Hypers organization. And SAP Hypers stands for uh, Customer Engagement and Commerce. So to make it short, we are focusing on front office applications, B2C. Um, and when looking on um, the product portfolio um, of our organization, omnichannel is key for sure. Um, but we also have solutions like a content and experience management solution. Um, we have a billing solution you just saw before in the talk. There's a commerce suite where you can build up a commerce store. Big brands are counting on us with that. There's a marketing solution so you can do marketing planning, um, but as well execute it. Um, there's a service and a sales solution um, and so on. But we also have a technology stack. Uh, you might have heard of in one of the last Cloud Foundry summits, it's called SAP Hypers uh, as a Service. It's our microservice orchestration framework. Very important because we deeply believe in the ecosystem um, around us. And it's running on SAP Cloud Platform, uh, which provides us the needed Cloud Foundry instance. And my team is responsible for research and innovation. Um, and we have a lot of innovation teams spread around the world. Um, so for example, there's an innovation team in Munich located, it's called SAP Hypers Labs, and they are mainly focusing on innovations around commerce. But we also have a physical lab, a physical innovation lab uh, in China. It's called SAP Hypers, the digital innovation space. It's located in Chengdu, China. And my colleagues are over there are doing a lot of research in the area of social media, machine learning. So for example, how we better can integrate in WeChat and how we can get use of AI technologies and something like that. And because Chengdu is the so-called Silicon Valley um, of China, we are working a lot with local startups to do co-innovation and to get new ideas. Um, and that's the labs here um, on, on the picture. And my team is mainly focusing um, on the um, idea to combine as many SAP Hypress products as we can um, to build up kind of an innovation lighthouse or a showcase uh, to tell a story. So to help customers and partners to understand how our products can help them to transform their business into the digital world. So we want to tell a story. We want to be a mind opener, okay? We really don't want to sell our proof of concepts. It's really about telling a story. And as you can see, we have uh, showcases in all different kind of industry, industries. So public transportation, for example, but as well as in entertainment and hospitality, and as well as in the automotive industry. And we as a team, we are not an expert in all of those industries. Um, because remember, it's not about that we you know, go too deep. It's really about to tell a story everyone gets. So even I can tell my family and we can discuss about that. And then people and companies out there can transform this idea into their own business. This is really the goal what we are aiming with innovation lighthouses. And today, in this talk, I want to talk about one of our latest and greatest showcase. It's called Smart Driving. We just released it in May uh, on Sapphire. It's an SAP conference, and I'm really happy to show it here uh, on stage as well. And when talking about smart driving, everyone has in mind um, self-driving cars. Okay, state-of-the-art technology right now, and it's not any longer science fiction. When I'm coming from Europe, I'm, from, I'm based in Germany, and I'm coming to the US, here to Silicon Valley, at least a few weeks back, there was all that kind of Google cars around me, you know, the self-driving cars. So it's, it's reality already. It's just a matter of time we can ha get hands on and have our own self-driving car. But what's also we already have access to is, for example, Tesla. And Tesla is doing cars with a lot of software in and that's something we really love to see, right, as engineers. I think what they're also doing good is they're regular doing software updates and really taking care. So that's really something we are looking forward. But what they're also doing is they are sometimes releasing new features in the car. So, for example, the autopilot in a major update, so to call. And what they are doing is from a business model perspective, they are asking to charge upfront so that you want to access those kind of functionality because it's just software you need to pay money for uh, to can use those functions and features. And that is fine, don't get me wrong, they should earn their money because it's a lovely car and I would love to own my, uh, one by myself and the software is great. 
but it's just we want to think uh, about how we can rethink that model because, right, I mean, we are cloud natives, so we are used to cloud, we are used to transaction-based systems, we are used to pay-per-use, as you have just seen in the uh, talk before. So we want to rethink the business model in regards, why do I need to pay upfront for, for that kind of functionality? It's like on-premise, right? It's like sending out a DVD and you get me the, the check for it. So we want to bring pay-per-use scenario into the car. So an example could be um, with the, by keeping with Tesla, with the autopilot, something like tomorrow I have a business meeting, I will be a long drive on the highway, um, and yes, an autopilot would definitely make sense. And I only want to pay for it while I'm on the highway and while I'm driving to uh, the business meeting. But maybe on a regular day when I'm just going to the office and you know, going back home and doing shopping, the autopilot is not needed, so I don't need to pay for it. Um, or another example could be, um, maybe you drive a new Porsche um, with a lot of horsepower, and you might know in Germany some highways are unlimited, so you can really have some fun with it, you can impress your girlfriend, and so on. And yes, I want to have full access to the full horsepower during that time. But maybe again, when I'm just on a regular day and going to the office and going back home, I don't need the full horsepower all the time. So I can just reduce it. And by doing so, immediately uh, my insurance rate will go down because it's not so risky, you know, I'm more safe driver and something like that. So this is really new business models behind that concept when you think about pay-per-use scenarios um, in a car. And that is something we want to come up with in the showcase smart driving. So we wanted, as explained, really rethink the business model in this, car, in this um, example. We want to rethink about functions and features, pay per use, in the car. Okay? Um, but for that, we definitely need to have a high, flexible, and scalable infrastructure. That's why we are going for SAP Cloud Platform with the Cloud Foundry Edition as a foundation. And yes, we, we want to be totally open. That's why we are going for a microservice architecture, uh, an API-first pattern. And I would definitely love to show you the whole showcase in a real car here on stage, right? To have your Tesla or try to have your Porsche. But as you can imagine, it's not always so easy uh, to have access to that cars here on stage. So that's why we as a team decided to make it more simple. We will go for virtual reality, okay? Um, and I'm now the, uh, the lucky guy. I can have some fun here on stage driving a car, right? Um, so now for that, for a moment, uh, let's go to the demo and skip PowerPoint, okay? Um, and what we first need to do in order to start the demo, we need to create a new driver, okay? Um, for that, we have built an, um, sorry, we have built a custom UI following the SAP UI pattern Fury. Uh, it's built with UI5. As you can see, you can sign up a new driver and there as well as a challenge object. And let me just explain for a second what we mean with, ch with challenge. A challenge for us is bringing um, gamification into driving a car. Think about what Apple is doing with the Apple Watch or Nike is doing. They try to motivate you with kind of challenges or um, um, something like getting more on the street, do more running, um, you know, be more healthy, something like that. And that's something we want to bring into cars as well with challenges. Something like you get in the car in the morning, there's a challenge coming up telling you, hey, Thorsten, try to reduce the average speed of your car by 2% within the next two weeks. Something simple, okay? And if I'm achieving that goal, I will earn some loyalty points maybe at the end of the week or when I achieve the goal, Zoe or maybe I get some discount, or maybe again, my insurance rate will go down because I'm a more secure driver, okay? So it's really about motivation, and that's behind the, um, the function of the challenge. I don't want to get into that too much today because we want to focus on the pay-per-use, but it's still the single point of entry to create a new driver. So let us do that, so I go to uh, sign up. Uh, let's go there, oops. Uh, select the challenge, just take the software here, for example, and create a new driver. Um, we only need now the first name, so let's take my name um, with Cloud Foundry, and I now can select the vehicle. And there are two options in there for the moment, so there's game car and show car. So I will choose game car because, remember, I want to show the virtual reality uh, scenario. But it is completely working with real cars as well. So we have done that. As long as the car is IoT enabled, we have access to the data, we can do that. So, but again, let's stick to um, game car. So now, uh, 
the driver is created. Uh, what I can do now, I will immediately stay, uh, start the challenge so that we don't need to go back to that UI, okay? So that we, we can get rid of it. So here we are, now I can start it. And what I will do now, and now it's the time for some fun, now I can go into the cockpit, get into my car, okay? Um, let's just turn up. So now, as you can see, and you would expect from virtual reality, um, I now can uh, put the glasses in my hand over here. No magic behind that. Now one more click is missing. Uh, here we are. So what you can see, you are now in a new Porsche. It's SAP Hypros branded, the way it should be, right? Um, you can look around in the car, you can have some fun. And what is very important to understand, we are currently um, on a very famous German racing track. It's called the Nürburgring. Uh, and when, what's happening when you are getting into the car, as you can see on the left top side, there's kind of an overview on subscriptions and functions and features that are available to me. Okay, a subscription based. Think about you get in your today's car, you know, it's like a head up display or might be integrated in the navigation system. Or yes, in the near, near, near future, it might be argumented reality where you have those informations. And because we are on a racing track, um, it wouldn't make fun to tune down and tune up the horsepower, right? I mean, we want to have the full access to the car. So it's more about, in this case, in this showcase, about supportive functions. So if, you're good, if you are a good driver, you don't need them. But if you need some help, like I will, you will see in a minute, they definitely make sense. So for example, you can turn on here, you have the overview on ABS. You can turn on traction control, or maybe yes, also something like a perfect line assistant. So it helps you, you know, to do better timing. And yes, to make some fun, every time you horn, we will charge you as well, okay? You will see that in a second. Uh, so yeah, there you can see all the subscriptions, like a starting point, like information. Let me put the classes just to the side for a second, because otherwise it's too hard for me to drive. Um, so what we can do now, now I will start driving and I will get into the road. So here I have my controller. Um, a little bit nervous here on stage, right? Uh, so what will happen now, as you can see in the left top corner again, the actual driver, Torsten Cloud Foundry, is just selected, the one we created before. All functions and uh, supporter functions are disabled because I'm, you know, I want to do my best. But as you can see, maybe I'm not the best driver. Uh, let us at least try to get around here. And what's coming up um, here is kind of like a an, an recommendation. Think about, and remember, we are SAP Hyper's customer engagement and commerce. So it's all about marketing. Oh, maybe we keep on the street. Um, and there's a recommendation coming up there. What is happening and why is this coming up? Because based on machine learning, we were watching and looking how you, you, you behave as a driver. And if you, and if you know that there is some support needed, we can do kind of feature recommendation, product recommendations, like you can see here. And what I can do now, definitely ABS seems like it makes sense to me. Um, I can now just um, activate them. Um, and get uh, use of them. So now it's turned on, uh, turned on. Let's turn traction control on as well. And what you can see now, I can drive. Hopefully, it will go a little bit better now. And what's happened as well as uh, if you closely look on the bill, we also charge money for as soon as you turned on those supportive functions, right? Uh, here now we are twelve dollars and so on. It's time best, right? So it's measured. And what I promised you, remember, every time I horn, I will also try get charged for. So let's do that. So you can see <laughs> they are getting now charged for as well. Okay, let's stop the car. I think you got the story, right? It's about activating, deactivating functions in a car, bringing this business model, and at the end, um, you get, uh, get charged for. So now let's go just back to the uh, UI for a second and stop the challenge we created before. And what happens now is that the car we just were driving is getting to the starting point so that you can later on have some uh, fun as well. But remember, because um, you were driving the car uh, and we will charge you money, what we are doing is we created just here, uh, based on your consumption uh, with a thermal printer, an invoice telling you, okay, Torsten, you have, we are charged now $27, okay? Um, so remember, if you later come by and want to drive a car, please bring some cash with you because I don't accept credit cards, okay? Um, Okay, that's just about some having some fun and connecting, you know, Internet of Things stuff um, and so on. For sure, the whole invoice is available as in PDF as well. So you can print it out, you can send it around. Yes, no magic behind it, right? What we have seen so far is really 
the consumer side. I am as a driver in the car, I can work with the features, I can activate them and can benefit of them. What we also want to do is have a quick look on how it looks like from an OEM perspective. So if you are the car manufacturer and you are enabling those features, how it looks. And you have seen this already in the demo before and in my talk before, we are using as one of the foundations to make that happen, SAP Hypers Revenue Cloud. Okay, so I don't want to repeat everything you already have seen. You have already seen SAP Hypers Revenue Cloud. There are experts uh, in the room more than I am in this functionality. What we only have used in this um, scenario is we have built up subscriptions. You have seen them at the beginning um, and um, the billing information. So just to have a quick look again on that, uh, when I go into billing, um, they are all um, the bills and users and drivers we created so far. Um, so let's just take one, it doesn't matter now. Um, Torsten SAP, for example, there you can see again, there are the subscriptions, there are the functions I assigned to that subscription and to the driver, and you can see what you've used and what we will charge him by the end of the month. So pay as a use, but that's the backbone um, of the solution and of the showcase. With that, back to the slides for a moment. So what we have seen, uh, just to repeat, as an overview when you get into the car, um, what subscriptions are available to you, what you can access, and what's the price tag for it. Uh, you have seen the overview on what functions are activated and what you will be charged for. Um, and to have some fun, yes, we printed out with a thermal printer, as well as we have um, a classical invoice as a in PDF version available. And you have seen um, from an OEM perspective how they can use SAP Hypers Revenue Cloud. So what we mainly talked so far is really the inner circle. What I can do as a car manufacturer by providing this data and this functions to a customer. But remember, I already told you at the beginning, we are heavily believe in a scalable uh, environment based on Cloud Foundry as well as an open API uh, microservice-based architecture. And just think about, we can not only do this now in an inner circle, we can also have an outer circle. We can ask our ecosystem, and this is, as I already mentioned, we heavily believe in, to be part of, of such scenarios as well. Because if they have access to the data and to the interfaces based on an API-first driven uh, architecture, they can access the data. They can create additional business models, okay? And they can be another benefit for me as an end, uh, end user. And so, for example, the insurance case I explained before, like, okay, when you have more horsepower, the insurance rate goes up and goes down and so on. Um, a partner of us really tried to do, so what they have done is they built a proof of concept on top of our proof of concept. Um, so it's really about um, getting access to the data we are providing of the car and getting use of them and bring a new business model. And let me just show that to you as well. Um, so the partners, MSG Global, they have a lot of experience in the area of insurance. And what they have done is they built that kind of uh, dashboard um, in, 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 on top of our proof of concept. And what you can see is you have a list of all drivers that were driving so far. Um, there should be somewhere here, here, here I am. There's the driver I created before and I was driving. And what they are just doing it because we are now in an open world and we are providing our data based on APIs, they are just connecting to our services and fetching all the car data we can provide them. So on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, you can, all, you can see all the data um, they have access to and we can provide them to. And what they have done is, and this is now a really simple example, but it can be very complex, they just enrich the data with third-party data. So while I was driving in virtual reality on a racing track, the Nürburgring in Germany, um, they looked up what is the real better information currently in Germany to enrich the data. And yes, there could be, of course, a lot of more data to enrich. And what they have done is they built up a so-called driver score or an insurance score. Together with data scientists, they had kind of a concept, don't ask me how it works out, how the algorithm looks like. MSG Global are more the expert in that. So that they are bringing up this insurance uh, scoring that based on my driver behavior, my insurance rate goes up and goes down. Okay, and there's really a market for that. So back to the slides again. Um, what I was just explaining with the insurance example is also not any longer science fiction. This is already a reality. So for example, in Europe, and I guess in the US it's the same, you can have for everything in insurance, okay? And healthcare is a very complex part in regards to insurance. And what you can have is uh, an insurance for your teeth. Um, 
And, but sometimes they are very expensive because there's a lot of risk, you know, that it's, uh, you might have some problems and so on. And in some countries, for example, in Switzerland, insurance are, uh, the insurance rate is very high to have kind of an insurance for your teeth. Um, and that's something insurance companies are thinking about how they can reduce the rates to have a bigger, you know, customer base. And what's out there, there's a company, they are providing tooth plus, which are IoT enabled. So they are sharing their data, you know, how often, at what time, how long you are cleaning your teeth. And what they have done, remember, that's the inner circle. That is the OEM, that's the one who provides the tooth plus with the data. And what they have done is they opened the APIs and now letting insurance participate in, and you can now have an insurance rate for your teeth um, with a personalized um, insurance rate based on your behavior, how you clean your teeth, okay? So this is really something which is happening and which is a concept not only of the future, it's already a reality. And that's why I'm talking about the inner circle, IoT, as well as an outer circle. But back now for a second um, from our product portfolio. You know that slide, I've showed it on the beginning. So what we have used in the showcase um, um, I just presenting to you. So yes, it's mobile, it's cloud, um, for sure. We've used IoT, so we have an IoT-enabled car. Maybe it's in virtual reality, or maybe it's in a real car. Or again, you can transform that to any other industry as well. And yes, we are doing notifications and recommendations or product recommendations uh, based on your behavior. We are using SAP Hyper's Revenue Cloud um, as the billing solution. You have seen it, you have heard about it in the talk before. And we are using um, SAP Hypers as a service um, as the orchestration framework for the microservices we've built. And again, SAP Cloud Platform provides us the needed Cloud Foundry as a highly scalable infrastructure. And this is now very important to understand why we couldn't do that before. Um, and the inner circle as well as the outer circle, based on um, the interfaces we are providing and the scalability we have with Cloud Foundry to be open for an ecosystem and to let them participate in just such scenarios and, be, and can extend our solutions wouldn't be possible before we have access to that kind of technology. And this is very important for us, and I hope you get it from all our cloud, uh, cloud platform talks in regards to Cloud Foundry. It's really a very empowered, important foundation to be open and flexible. Which brings me to a quick look on uh, the architecture overview. Not too much details, but you get an understanding how it looks like. Um, so on the left-hand side, you can see there's my desktop machine uh, with the race simulation running on, with we have you know, hijacked and added functionality, um, like uh, enabled the gaming car with IoT information, and the thermoprinter is connected uh, to my local machine. What we have in the bottom line as a foundation are our products. So we have SAP Hyper Revenue Cloud, we already talked about. What I haven't talked about so far is SAP Vehicle Insights. So all the IoT data we're getting from the car, we store in SAP Vehicle Insights. And SAP Vehicle Insights is a solution based on um, SAP HANA running in the cloud platform, uh, very scalable, you know, you can put all that lot of data in uh, what we're getting out of the car. And again, Hypers as a service is one foundation for us. Um, we are using it as a persistency package where we can store additional data um, as well as a customer object um, when you are creating a new driver, for example. How looks the orchestration of this scenario? What we have done is, I already explained the heart of the scenario and we call it the mashup, um, is the challenge object, right? That's the place where um, the scenario comes together. We have a register client where you can set up and um, um, sign off a new, a new driver. We have a rules service, a rules engine based on machine learning so that we can do different kind of recommendations. And yes, we have wrapped a few of our services and products. As you can see, the revenue cloud facade as well as the vehicle uh, inside facade to enrich the data while we are accessing it. And based on the open framework um, and APIs, now a partner like MSG Global can easily extend the solution. And what they have done is they have built an Internet of Things analyzer. That's the, the engine they have built um, to do together with data scientists and building up a model. And uh, for a demo purpose, they also created an insurance scoring dashboard you have seen uh, on top of it. And everything connects to our interfaces in an API first pattern, so it's really easy. And now let's just talk from an SAP Hypers perspective now. Everything which is marked orange is really following the microservice uh, architecture and the API first pattern. Again, we heavily believe in that. Um, and everything also in orange is running on uh, Cloud Foundry. 
um, so that we have the scalability. And even a very important strategic project for us, so for example, SAP Hypers Revenue Cloud is completely rebuilt as explained in the session before and is completely utilizing Cloud Foundry scalability and using microservices as a foundation. So just to wrap it up, what have you, see, what have you seen? So you have seen another example of a um, pay-per-use um, scenario together with SAP Hypers Revenue Cloud. Um, you have seen a digital transformation of a scenario um, powered by a needed and um, a scalable environment and architecture um, provided by Cloud Foundry. And you have seen when you follow that kind of concept um, how partners easily can enrich businesses uh, and business solutions out there and you can enable with that the ecosystem. Everything I told you now in 25 minutes is available in 30 seconds. <laughs> Um, I don't want to roll the video. There's something on YouTube available. I will keep it in the slides. Um, if you want to have a look at uh, feel free to do so. It explains um, the scenario high level. With that, um, I will set up the whole um, showcase on our SAP Cloud uh, Platform booth for today. So if you want to have some fun, want to drive our Porsche on our famous racing track, come by. But please remember, bring some cash, right? Uh, no credit card. Um, and with that, um, thanks a lot for listening. And if there are questions right now, you can ask them now or maybe later um, on the booth if you like to. Thank you. <laughs>